What's up guys, this is BS for Build. I'm Chris, we're back working on the Plan B BRZ, getting this baby going. So I got a couple things to go over and then I got some news to go over at the end and then we'll start working. So sorry, this is gonna be a little bit of a drawn out dialogue, but I'll try and make it as fast as possible. You guys made a lot of comments about the wheels in the last episode. I love these wheels, they look awesome. We finally got them wrapped in some tires. I think these are 275, 35s if I'm not mistaken. And these are F1R wheels. This car is proudly sponsored by F1R wheels. Thank you guys very much over at F1R wheels. You guys may notice I run F1R wheels on my uh, Plan A BRZ as well as my 68 Camaro. I really like the wheels. I hit up the company and said, hey, can we make a deal? And they said, yeah, we'd love to sponsor this build. So thank you guys very much. They hooked me up with these. These are the F23 model and uh, the 10 and a half inch is wide by 18. And uh, the guys over at F1R said that these things fit perfect with Rock Rocket Bunny. So I was like, cool. You know, shoot me a set of those and then we're gonna film them and put them on here and we'll show you guys fitment, spacing, how the offset looks and feels and everything. So they're a positive 20 offset and uh, we're gonna go into that in the next episode which is gonna be the fitting the Rocket Bunny pieces on the front and the rear bumper. I wanted to make that episode this episode but I screwed up and I didn't order lug nuts in time. So my lug nuts are getting in tomorrow and my wheels and tires are done today. So I'm sorry I can't do that episode now but we have a lot of good work to be doing on the car today. I got a used front bumper that's got a crack in it uh, that needs to be repaired. We've got some interior stuff to go over and we also have some tuning stuff. We have a new O2 sensor for the front because uh, we stole it and put it on the Plan A. And we also have, um, we want to test the MAF sensor from the Plan A as well and see if that is still good. Other news. Uh, there's two news things. I hope I won't forget them. <laughs> One is this build is going a little bit faster than usual. I don't know faster if we just have less problems, but I do have a really strict deadline for this car. Um, because I'm heading down to California early April and I'm bringing this car with me. So I have family things to be doing in California uh, in April 9th, I believe, but April 10th, I'm gonna be in LA and I'm gonna have this car. So what I wanna do is meet up with you guys. Um, I'm sure on a Sunday at near LA, I'll drive anywhere within a couple hours of LA to meet up with anybody. So somebody shoot me a car meet, a cruise, uh, anything that where we can all get together and meet up. Um, that's already scheduled and an event that's already going and I'll make sure to be there. So Sunday, April 10th, California, I'm yours. You guys just let me know where to go and me and the plan B are coming down there. So I'm really excited about that and I'm really excited to bring this car down there. But that is why like we have a short time frame to do this and we got to get it done within then. And that'll be the initial done, you know, cars are never really done, but I want to get through the first steps. Now another thing that I do want to mention about what this car is and, and being done, uh, it's probably, this is actually leaning towards more like being my daily driver. I stopped daily driving the plan A because it's pissing me off. The automatic transmission, in my opinion, is not very good. Um, I'm sorry to say, and I don't mean to be a hater to anybody else that likes the automatic, but I don't enjoy that transmission. I think it's embarrassing to say, but my two ton Dodge Charger has a better automatic transmission motor setup. So the drivetrain doesn't feel very good. Um, it's not very enjoyable. The wheel fitment is a little bit aggressive. But I don't really mind that, but it's just, it's mainly the automatic transmission that's really driving me crazy, as well as that tiny little oil leak, that teeny tiny little oil leak. When your exhaust manifold is right under the motor, it just, you know, a little bit of oil drips down and then you're smoking. And I don't like my car smelling like smoke all the time. So it's still, it's not like we fixed the main leak. There's just some mystery, tiny, tiny, tiny. It's like literally like two drops a day oil leak, but that's enough to piss me off and not want to do it. So. Um, I'm really leaning actually, but the car looks beautiful and I love it. Like I walk outside every day and I'm like, that car looks awesome. I just don't feel like driving it. I'd rather drive my charger just because it's so much more comfortable right now. So this is actually going to shift towards being built as my daily driver right now. That's the game plan. Um, and then I'm really starting to think about motor swaps um, for, the, for the plan A so we can get a manual transmission in there and a good strong motor in there. So what that may be like, I don't know. But you know, when you think about fixing that crankcase, if I buy a new one and whatever, you know, we're at like six, 700 bucks and you gotta do a lot of work and you know, it's like, why not get a $2,000 motor and just put it in there and have some fun. We'll get a lot of footage out of it. Maybe help, hopefully teach some people how to do it. I know, you know, they've kind of been done to death. The two JZ BRZs or the LS1 JZs, uh, LS1 JZs, what am I talking about? <laughs> LS1 BRZs, they've been done a lot. But they've been done a lot by race car companies. I haven't seen a lot of people doing them DIY in the back of their shop, so I'm, that's kind of where my head's at. But you know, you should build every car to be a solid car to start off with, and then you can modify it later. So obviously, priority for this build is build a solid car. But I am going to be driving it a couple thousand miles at the end of this month, so it's got to be really solid, daily drivable, 
and uh, and then we'll go from there. But that's kind of what I'm thinking now. So as we're talking about, you know, putting really really wide tires on it that are not track like you know for track you probably want to keep um, the end keys that I have on there. But uh, for right now it's starting to look more like daily driver ish. All right, I hope that's all the news. I hope I covered everything. Uh, sorry I talked so long. It is time to get started working on this car. I think I'm going to start on my front bumper because that's an absolute mess. And let's jump over into that. All right, guys. Well, we're back here working on my bumper. And uh, so this is a used bumper I found on eBay. I picked it up here in Portland as a local pickup. And it has a crack running from about here over to here. And, you know, this crack is in a pretty good spot for me to repair because... Basically the lip connects all the way around the bottom of this uh, bumper, so I have something to help me out here. So I uh, drilled in some support here to keep the bumper together with a little bit of metal backing, and then I applied this epoxy here on the front and the back of the crack. Now here's the problem. When I was mixing the epoxy, the hardener seemed a little bit screwed up, but I said, ah, it'll probably be fine, like, whatever. Like, it wasn't that bad, but the hardener didn't seem I don't know, something seemed a little off about it, but I just tried to mix it up the best I could, and then I went ahead and applied it on there, and then clamped this thing together, which I've since separated, that's why you can see the crack. Anyways, I clamped it together and left it there. 24 hours later, I came back, and it's still tacky and crappy, so the hardener had gone bad, and so this, all this stuff on here is foobar, and it has to be completely removed. So. This is like a huge bummer. It's like the worst case scenario. So what I'm going to do is I got to pull these screws off, pull the backing off, separate this crack gently, and then get in here and clean this entire area. And then I'm going to come back with um, a Loctite product that's made for ABS plastic that's going to be much better. And I'll show you guys that once I apply it. So lots of work going in to fix this stupid little crack, unfortunately, but it's just got to be done. All right, well, you can see our bumper here and our crack is cleaned up sand it down. I basically just used a razor blade to remove the majority of the leftover, um, it was called bumper repair epoxy. I'm doing air quotes right now. Um, I removed that stuff with the razor blade and then I sanded it down. One interesting thing is this says uh, Subaru made in Japan, but this is an FRS bumper. So there's discussions of where the motor is made and how it was made and who engineered it and everything, but it turns out even FRS Scion bumpers are made by Subaru, which is interesting. So going around here, and I sanded up the front and stuff too. So the next thing, I have some legitimate, really good uh, Loctite uh, ABS plastic um, epoxy that I'm going to be using. I'm going to put that inside the crack, then I'm going to install my little bracket once again, and throw that in there, and clamp it down and leave it overnight. All right, we got our bumper all sealed back up. That is the Loctite ABS plastic epoxy. It's built for plastic exactly like this bumper. Um, and we got our bracket back in there and it's holding the pieces together nice. And then if you come around here, it's very nice and flush and even. So that's looking good. I'm happy about that. I'm really glad that we redid that. And I think it actually turned out way better than the first time. So that is good. Next thing, we're going to move on to the wing. Okay, so let's talk wing stuff. This is a Rocket Bunny V2 wing. Same one that I put on the Plan A. People have commented and said, you know, why put the same stuff on the same car? Um, it's just my style. It's the, it's the style that I like. And, you know, you can't drive two cars at once. So although I do have two cars, I kind of want the things that I like the most on that car. Anyways, you can notice that I'm focusing on this little uh, hole right here. This thing's shipped with the, basically a hole punched in it. So i got to fill this with, uh, with Bondo. So I'm going to scrape away this area, fill this with Bondo, and then do a little bit more touch-up on this wing. Then we're going to spray it with a coat of high flow primer and that way we can sand it down and have it ready to be mounted onto this trunk. And then also to do that, you're gonna to wanna to remove your uh, badging, so we're gonna to have to pull the BRZ letters off of there as well and uh, remove the residue. So we're just doing a little bit of work to get this thing prepped up and ready before paint. Okay, the next thing I want to try to figure out with this car is a question about the stereo. So these stereos are terribly engineered uh, as far as I'm concerned. The software is reliant on this SD card that comes with your stereo. And basically, if you lose power to the car, your battery dies, something else like that, your stereo is wiped and can't be used as a stereo anymore. 
Um, so what I did was I actually got the card from the plan A, B, R, Z, and I'm trying to figure out if it works in this. Things that I've heard so far are that it doesn't, which would imply that if you lose your card, you have to buy a new stereo. I've heard the dealership can't give you a new card coded to your stereo. So anyways, I'm gonna try and figure out if this card from a totally different BRZ will work. So this is what you get when your stereo is basically dead. It just says, uh, program loading is necessary, please insert SD card. So we click the card in there, and see if we can get some tunes out of it. All right, well so far nothing. The screen's just flashing really strangely. It's not giving a correct error code or anything like that. So I'm gonna grab a beer and sit here and watch this for a while and I'll let you guys know what happens. Well, I gave it some time. I tried a couple different combinations. I tried uh, turning the car off and loading it with the card on. I tried pulling the battery uh, cables a, a, again and loading, uh, turning the car on with the card in there. I tried taking the card out and putting it in there. I get the same result every time. It's just this flashing screen. Um, so it sounds like the people on the forums were right. The, you can't swap a card from uh, one car to the other, which uh, being a software engineer myself, I think I know why that is. I think basically they encrypted the card to match the stereo so people couldn't copy their software and use it in other platforms. Uh, probably a maps thing or something else like that. Um, but all in all, you know, sometimes like software and locking down your software can be a big hindrance and in this case it totally is. So if you lose your SD card for one of these cars and your battery goes dead, your stereo is worthless. And I think that head unit is like $400 from the factory. So this is a big bummer. Um, it's very frustrating that they would do this just to protect their software because honestly it's actually not even that good. As far as stereos go, they're pretty poor. So, um, bummer, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'll call the dealership and see what else I can do about trying to get an SD card or anything else like that, but it's gonna be a real pain in the ass to do a road trip with uh, no stereo, so that's uh, that's actually just not gonna happen. Like, I'll, either, I'll just get a different stereo if I have to to do that, so. Um, while we're here, we can talk about the steering wheel. So the steering wheel has been swapped around a few more times and here's what I got, what it looks like right now. Okay, well here was the idea. I got this suede wrapped steering wheel. It happens to be like a half an inch or an inch smaller than the standard one, which I don't really like. Um, and I got an adapter um, and I was gonna do that. And then when I got over to the car, I realized that my cruise control settings are built into the steering wheel body right here. And I really don't wanna go without cruise control uh, on a car like this. So what we have is the thing that we sealed up from last time, um, which people really hated. <clears throat> and uh, this could just click in here. I pulled the uh, carbon fiber wrapping off of it because it didn't really end up very good. So I could click this in here and wire up the horn and we could have a steering wheel and a horn. It looks pretty ugly. Um, but I'm thinking about getting a little bit more creative. I'm not really sure right now. Um, really the plan was to use this steering wheel, but it turns out we're gonna have to use this in a different build. Um, so I've, I've been thinking about getting creative. If anybody has any uh, cool cars, like concepts that they've seen that they like using, you know, this steering wheel area, you know, it's a very focal point of a build. Um, anything kind of cool. I've seen people have like uh, track notes on here. So you would you would flatten this out, and put like plexi over it or something, and you could put track notes or you could put anything else on there. That could be kind of cool. Uh, for me, it'd be more like a grocery list or something, but. Uh, we could figure out something cool to do with this. So that's still like a work in progress, but for now, I mean, we could clip this back in here. Excuse me. And, uh, damn it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we could clip, we could clip this back in here. Somehow. And not activate the whole, oh. I didn't wire up the horn, so it just got a positive bridge from uh, touching underneath there. Wow, that was loud. My ears are ringing. Um, anyway, so I'll, I'll be pulling this back out to wire up the horn correctly. And then moving on to the next thing. For now. So the next thing that we want to do is we have, um, we have a new O2 sensor, a new used O2 sensor, and we have a MAF sensor from the Plan A. I don't know if it's called a MAF sensor, but anyways, it's your MAF airflow. Yeah, MAF sensor. Um, from the Plan A. So I'm going to hook both of those things up to the car now and then we're going to turn the car on and see if it throws any codes. Well, we are in a tight spot now. Um, so here's the problem. I bought this thing going by part number or something. I don't know. I bought it on eBay. And after doing some research, it, it looks like this is definitely not an OEM uh, FRS or BRZ part. Uh, and so the plug doesn't match up and the wire is not long enough. So I can't go from my headers um, to, the, to the car, the wiring harness, as well as the plug isn't right. 
So I'm gonna have to do some research and find out if this is indeed the exact part number or close, if it's an interchangeable part number. And then I'm either gonna modify this plug. So I could modify this plug pretty easily and make sure it still clicks in. And then I could extend the wire and then we could go in here. And I think that would work. Um, if not, I'm gonna have to really quickly try and get another part because we have to be able to drive this car and give it a shakedown in the next week or so. Uh, so it's going to be tricky, but I'll see what I can do, and I'll come back and let you guys know. Well, crisis averted. I got another uh, O2 sensor, so I'm going to throw that in here. Um, the other one that doesn't work, I'm just going to leave alone for now. I'll either return it or something, but for now we're good to move on. So I'm going to throw that in here and then install our airbox. All right, uh, airbox. I got a shout out to uh, Justin Willis. Thank you very much. He shipped me his uh, airbox. I think he upgraded to a cold air intake and he had this whole airbox system laying around. So we took the uh, master flow sensor from the plan A that we thought was bad, but we never really verified it because we definitely had a bad O2 sensor on that car. Um, so the idea here is we're gonna plug this in and then we're gonna uh, turn the car on and scan it for codes. All right, car's on, scan tool's turning on. We'll run a scan. Code's found, zero. Monitors are all okay, monitors not available. Okay, so we have no codes on the car. Um, that doesn't mean much at this point. What we really need to do is turn it on and uh, run it for a little bit. But um, we're in a very small shop and I got more work to do today, so I'm not gonna turn it on until I'm ready to get out of here. I just don't wanna throw, fill up the whole room with some uh, exhaust. So I think we're gonna move back onto our spoiler we were working on earlier. With this spoiler, I'm just going to use a, uh, a little hand sanding pad and wrap some of my um, sandpaper around it and use that and just do this by hand. Uh, I'm going to do some 220, then some 320, then some 400, and then I think that should be good enough. And now I'll get it ready to go on the car. Now that we're done with sandpaper and everything, we're gonna to want to debadge um, the car because the spoiler covers this area. Uh, the other side's already done, the Subaru side's already done um, by the previous side. <clears throat> Don't mind that. Um, another thing we're gonna to want to do though is just tighten down this trunk lid uh, while we're in here. Um, it's gonna, I think it'll make it a lot easier with the process. So I'm gonna grab, I think this is a 13 mil. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna grab a socket and come in and tighten this down. And then I'll close the lid once more, make sure it closes nicely, and then uh, pull our badges off. Also, you're gonna wanna pull this back plastic off. If you guys are doing this at home, you wanna pull this, pull this back padding off so you can access from the inside to shoot bolts. Oh, this one doesn't have holes in it. Well, I'm gonna be drilling some holes in here so I can uh, put screws into my spoiler. At the end of one of the quarter panel episodes, somebody asked how the trunk lined up with the quarter panel, so I wanted to show you guys. So here's the OEM trunk line. Um, it's a little bit skinnier up front here and wider in the back. And this is what we ended up with on this. So it looks like the trunk is like maybe a millimeter over to this side too far. I mean, I installed it pretty quickly. Um, but overall, it came out really nicely, matching up with the quarter panel. And of course, now we're going to cover it all up with a spoiler anyways. So I think we're going to want to um, drill some holes before we try and mount our spoiler up so that we know we're going to throw our screws through. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to do two holes, one over here and one over here. They'll come out and we'll put our screws through there. Okay, we now got two holes here and here, and when we sneak our spoiler over here and lay it on, those are the spots where we can grip into the spoiler. And hopefully drill into it. I gotta say, this spoiler over my last one, this one, the fitment is pretty shitty compared to the other one, which is a bummer. So, it's definitely not as good a fitment, um, but it'll be good enough. 
So the next thing I'm gonna do is lay down some um, guide tape around here to figure out where I wanna put my 3M tape down as my base. And then we'll go from there. So we're gonna do uh, same thing we did last time, 3M tape. Then we're gonna screw from the trunk into the spoiler and then we're gonna use a seam sealer to seal this thing up. Actually, I decided to do this one a little bit differently. Uh, I figured since the spoiler is like right here, I'll put the tape on the spoiler itself and then I'll apply the spoiler to the trunk lid. Um, before I did that, I went over everything with um, paint prep, which is like a degreaser formula uh, that should um, promote adhesion from these things. Okay, we got our spoiler on here and it's on here nice and strong. So the next thing I wanna do is what I did, I did the same thing on the other build, but I wanna do it better this time. So um, last time we used this uh, epoxy, uh, no, it wasn't an epoxy, it was a silicone sealant um, and a caulking gun. And it worked just fine, but seam sealer seems to be a little bit stronger. It's a little bit tougher. Um, so that's what we're gonna use this time. So one more time, I'm gonna go across here with uh, paint prep and degreaser. Then the next thing I'm gonna do, which is what I learned from last time, is do very, very precise lines with painter's tape that are gonna mask out where we want the seam sealer to be and where we don't want it to be. So that's really the key here is you wanna mask and have these perfect lines with masking tape and in between those will be where the seam sealer goes. Then you just jam a bunch of seam sealer in there and run your finger around it to kind of smooth out and run a bead. Then you pull your masking tape up and you have this perfect line, in theory at least. So that's the game plan, but I really wanna make sure that I have a super clean surface for this because you can see I got some dust and some stuff other places. So we'll paint prep one more time and then we'll mask it off. It's go time. I got my seam sealer and uh, we got everything taped up. So we're just gonna lay a line through here and I expect this to take quite a while. But it should be really nice in the end. Okay, working time on this is 10 minutes, so I assume after 10 minutes it'll start to harden up a little bit. So I spotted my watch, and uh, we gotta give this about 10 minutes, and then 10, 15 minutes, and then what we'll do is we'll pull the masking tape off and then let it dry the rest of the way. Um, so that's that. I just watched a thing about how to make broccoli tater tots. Tater tots out of broccoli. If you're making your tater tots out of broccoli, you're probably ISIS and you need to get out of America immediately. You're not allowed to stay here anymore. They didn't even deep fry them, they just baked them. Of course. All right, it's been about 10 or 15 minutes. I'm gonna see if it is still firming up a little bit. Nope, nope, not firm enough. Need more time. Probably another 10 or 15 minutes. All right, we got a nice little line all the way around here, across here. Try not to give you all motion sickness. Um, it looks good, came out all right. And uh, it's gonna be a little bit more like kind of jarring right now because it's not painted, but once it's painted, it'll really just mold right into everything. So uh, now that I've done this twice, I, I really prefer this method. I like using seam sealer rather than caulking too. It's a little bit more heavy duty. And um, the tape on both sides is really the way to go with that. Gives you a nice clean line all the way around. And it, was, it almost came out of the gun good enough that you wouldn't even need to run your finger around it, but I think running your finger around it helps just jam it into the crack as well. So this is gonna add a lot of like, I think it seems so it does what I think it does, which I don't really know. Um, well, it dries really hard. So as long as it adheres to both surfaces, it's actually gonna, you know, add a little bit of uh, whatever it's called, you know, this thing's gonna be stuck down <laughs> to the trunk a little bit more securely than it would if we didn't do this.
But this, the big thing is, you know, we're not going to get any water uh, going in under this or just debris like flying in under here. So that's that. It's time to move on to the engine. All right, guys, last step of the process is we want to start this car and check it and run it a little bit and check it for codes. Uh, obviously, it's not good to start a car in a garage, so I got the garage door wide open. I got the door open over there, and I got a respirator. And I have no idea if a respirator will help at all, uh, but I know it won't hurt. So I'm going to strap it on, throw it on there. I'm probably going to start the car and check for any signs of uh, bad stuff. If no bad stuff, then I'm just going to walk outside and leave the camera rolling. Um, I have already checked the engine bay for obstructions. I see no obstructions, so I think we're ready to go here. Alright guys, that's really good news. Uh, the engine is running great, it sounds great, and it's throwing zero codes. So, the math that was on the plan A is now on the plan B, and then I stole the O2 sensor off the plan A that used to be on the plan B, and I put it back on the plan B. I don't know if you follow all that, but what it means is I need to buy one O2 sensor and throw it on the plan A so it'll run again. But the math sensor that we have on here is actually good. So rather than, we thought we were going to have to buy both of those parts, now we just have to buy one. And unfortunately I did buy one and I'm pretty positive that it actually is the factory exact right one with a different plug on it. I'm just gonna go ahead and return that one, return that, send it back and get the right one for the plan A and throw that on here. Engine sounds great, drivetrain, everything seems awesome. So I'm feeling really good. In the next episode, we're gonna put those awesome uh, F1R wheels on this car and we're gonna do the rear, the front and rear bumper rocket bunny izing of those and then we'll do a little steering, make sure that we have clearance on the wheels and everything like that in the next episode. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. This build is really coming along quick and we got our wing on there. So we're just getting steps closer to painting, which are awesome. Paint, oh, a lot of you guys have been asking, what colors is this car gonna be painted? It's a secret. I'll tell you when we paint it. It's gonna be awesome, I promise you that. And it's a secret. Um, that's it for this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, you can find us at bsforbuild.com if you want to help support the channel. Uh, check out some of our merch. We've got BS for Build lanyards. We've got key tags. We have hats like this one. Um, check all that stuff out at bsforbuild.com. Scroll down to the shop. Uh, buying any of that stuff directly helps support these builds. So thank you guys very much for doing that. Um, you can find us at facebook.com slash bsforbuild and bsforbuild on Instagram. That's it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. You're crazy if you're not subscribing. I mean, I just keep doing this stuff. There's just more videos at twice a week. Come on. And uh, my mom wants me to come visit her and say hi. And like, you know, my family wants to see me, but I'm like, no, I'm busy. I got cars. That's the excuse. That's the excuse I used. Anyways, um, remember uh, April 10th, Sunday, April 10th, I will be in California. Hit me up. Tell me where to go to meet up with the most of you guys. If we can come up with an idea, there's gotta be a meet somewhere in California, in LA. Pretty much, I'll put it this way, anywhere in California. I think it's the biggest state in the United States. Fuck Texas. Anyways, I'll be there, I'll show up, I'll bring some swag, and uh, we'll have a good time. Just let me know where to go. Uh, did I already do the whole, yeah, go to our website. Anyways, facebook.com slash BS for Build. You can find us there. Also, BS for Build on Instagram. Probably don't DM me on Instagram. It's almost impossible to get back to everybody without a computer keyboard. Uh, but hit me up on Facebook. Hit me up at email, chris at BS for Build.com. I've been talking forever. I'm sorry. Some people asked if I should do a blog. Actually, some people said, do a blog, a vlog, a vlog. If you guys want a vlog, let me know. I don't know about doing a vlog because I, I do two episodes a week on this already so a lot of my vlogging would be like, hey, I'm either getting parts or I'm here filming in the shop. But uh, let me know if you guys would like to see that. I'm more than happy to do a vlog but I don't want to water down the amount of content that we're doing. I don't want you guys to see episodes that you're like, man, I'm not going to watch that one because it's not car related. If that's the way you guys feel, which is the way I feel with some other auto vlogs, uh, let me know because I don't want to do stuff that's going to water down the channel. I really like having a channel where when I make something people know, like that's gonna be good car related content. And my whole life isn't car related content. Anyways, I've talked forever. Thank you guys very much for uh, watching this video. Please remember to hit the like button, likes really help, and just subscribe to the channel. That's it, I'm done talking. Peace, have a great night. Or day, or what? well it's night, it's night. Oh, unless you're on the uh, Europe. Yeah, Europe.
Let's go.